He was a great athlete. He ran, he threw, drew up plays on the turf. That's how good he was. I mean, I think that when you talk about Kenny Riley's legacy, I mean, it touches everything. It touches the field, it touches off the field. He made it look easy. He wasn't boisterous. He wasn't tooting his own horn. Kenny didn't say a word. You don't have to talk about how good you are. If you're good enough, people will talk about you. I went to high school in a little place in Bartow, Florida, called Union Academy, predominantly all-black school. We were uh, very rich in athletic tradition, especially football. I had uh, several offers because my program was pretty successful. He finished high school in 65, uh, Union Academy, uh, played with Coach Woodruff, and then from there he went on to play for Coach Gaither, played four years as a quarterback. He was an all-world quarterback in college at FAMU. He did everything. He was a uh, Rose Scholar nominee as, as well, so he was a pretty, pretty smart guy. In 69, he was drafted in the sixth round uh, by Coach Paul Brown. We were at training camp. I think it was the second or third day we had been there. My dad was standing by watching the quarterbacks practice. Kenny Riley was a quarterback at Florida A&M, so he started out there. My father walked up to him and said, Kenny, you go over there. And he pointed to the cornerbacks. What we saw was a guy that had all the innate abilities you would want in a cornerback. When I hit the field, Paul Bryant came up to me and said, you are a defensive back, plain and simple. First of all, I was just happy to get that opportunity, so it didn't bother me. Never played defensive back at all. So you can imagine not playing a position, and then you get to the pinnacle of the sport, and you have to play a position you never played before. He had some guys that he played with from college that were able to, to make it to the NFL, and he was like, if they made it, I know I can make it. And all he needed was an opportunity, no matter what the position. What it did for me, it, it made me realize I couldn't be good as, I gotta be better than. I was very, very competitive. For me, it was a challenge. It motivated me to show that I could play because I was a quarterback, not a defensive back. And a lot of people thought I wouldn't make it. But uh, because of that, I thought it really propelled me over to be the best that I could be. And he went over to the cornerback group and uh, quickly took hold, and uh, within a year was our starting corner back. Just to make that transition and make it seem seamless, that just goes to show that, you know, he was quiet, but he was definitely competitive. He was very loud on the football field. Not verbally, but the way he played. Some guys do a lot of talking, and the talk doesn't match up with the play. It comes back to bite you in the end. Ken Ryan never got bit. He was cerebral. He studied his opponents. He had notebooks upon notebooks of studying receivers. Those 65 interceptions came as much by his brain as they did his athletic ability. And uh, I used to jot down information on the receivers that beat me, what move they uh, used to beat me, and I did it so that if I played them again, that I wouldn't make the same mistake twice. Right away, uh, as a young player, I noticed who was one of the best players on the football team. You had to notice him because he was, he was doing something great all the time. And Seif will go back into throw. Fires out in the flat, intercepted by Riley. Down to the 35, the 30, may go all the way, he will. That background as a quarterback helped him a lot, and just him being a student of the game. He made it look easy. I still like Marvel at 65 interceptions. For all around value, a man like Ken Riley, number 13, is tough anywhere on the field. This game builds relationships and that you never forget. 
When you get to a team as a youngster and you have guys like Kenny Riley, you learn a lot. You learn how to be a professional on and off the field. He was all about the team. He even allowed me to sit with him on the plane, which was really big time because back then, veterans did not allow rookies to sit next to him. So he kind of took me under his wings in a lot of ways. Not even in high school that he played defense and she has to make that transition on the highest level and then to play 15 years and then to have 65 interceptions. But that's just remarkable. He was as consistent as anyone wants to be in a football player on the field. It seemed like he was as good from the beginning all the way till the end. At the end of his last two years, I think he led the conference in interception. So not only did he play 15 years, he even got better as he was older. So that's one of the remarkable things because he retired at 36. After one game, he was coming home. They had to take him to the hospital, you know, to fill him up with fluid again. Then he said, this will be my last year. I'm going to go out walking and on top but that's the way he was. Like I said, he didn't want anybody to be him. He was gonna go out on his own and on his own terms, and that's what he did. Knowing that he could probably play another year or two, but he just didn't want to backslide and want to go out on top. So he invited his coach up from college, and he was with him on that day when he retired. He said that his 15 years was long enough. I'm not sure if there's another guy at defensive back who came from where he came from and did it the way that he did. All right, the Ken Riley Show is back. And Coach, we were in Grambling, Louisiana, Eddie Robinson Stadium, the home of a living legend, uh, Coach Eddie Robinson. And certainly this was your first time to match wits with him, I guess coach to coach, but uh, everybody knows uh, the great Eddie Robinson. Uh, it's a great experience, Keith. I've worked with Eddie, well, against Eddie only in an all-star situation the first time across in a, in a regular season game. And uh, again, I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, talk with him. He did well at coaching. I think he won two conference titles, maybe or something like that. He became athletic director. And he was the rattler. He was fam you. He went on to coach his alma mater. He went on to be an athletic director. Tremendous person in his community down home in Florida. Bartow was his home. This was his community. He knew that he had such a strong foundation and such a strong tribe that helped him to get to where he was. That really meant a lot to him to give back. He was always giving and thinking of others. Anybody could walk up to him and say, oh, I need this, I need that. And he would give it to him. You know, and I said, okay. I said, when are you gonna get your money back? But he didn't ask for it back. He said, God bless me in another way, in which he did. And that's where he was. He was just a giving, thoughtful person, you know. Dropping deep where flights were diverted. <laughs> only by Ken Riley, who has for years been one of the most outstanding yet under-publicized cornerbacks in the game. The one thing that we do lack is representation in the, uh, the National Football League Hall of Fame. What it shows, and Ken Riley is, a, is an example of that, is how we can overlook some of the best who have ever played before. It was just frustrating because he wasn't getting, he wasn't even getting in the door. He wasn't making to the finals, but he was, you know, always even killed and said, I've done all I can do. He wouldn't let that bother him. One of my last conversations, I've always told him that, hey, you're going to get in. If that's the last thing I do, you're going to get in. After he passed, my son said, Mom, I'm not going to let dad name, you know, just drop. So he, he did step in and he did a beautiful job. My brother, he's like calling this person and that person and getting people to, you know, keep his name out. And then when he passed, he was like, you know, that's my mission. I told my father, I was like, I will not step a foot on Canton until you're in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Few could match him as a cornerback and none could match him as a teammate. Now my Bengals brother finally takes his place in Canton, the late Ken Riley.
representing Ken is his son, Ken Riley II. When I found out that Kenny Riley made it, of course I was ecstatic. The president came up to me and said, hey, we would love for you to make the call to Ken. To finally get that call from Anthony Munoz was definitely special. He was kind of emotional, I was definitely emotional, but that's the call that I had dreamed of. To finally receive that call, it was just like, I was able to take sale. As soon as he picked up the phone, it was like a rush of emotions just overtook me. And uh, not only honored to be able to tell Ken that his dad was a, a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame in the class of 2023, just to be able to share the respect. What an amazing man and probably not tell him anything he didn't already know. To be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame is something that even when I'm not here anymore, my kids and their grandkids and kids can come and just look and hear the stories of what he was able to accomplish. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the 2023 Pro Football Hall of Fame class. Hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Did I right? Yes. Okay. Hey. hey, how's it how going? How you doing? My youngest sister, Kanisha, uh, she had t attended one of the uh, city council meetings and they came up with the idea of having the street named after, you know, where his home is. It definitely means a lot to me and my family. He built it in 77 and... Uh, so he built this house? Yes, yeah. 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 Him and my mom, this was his home and he cared about it. You know, he had, uh, he was pretty much in every committee that they had around. He worked with the EPAC and then he had his also his own foundation, the Ken Riley Foundation. So that was one of the things that he was most proud of. Thank you all so much for being here. This is all an indication of Ken. And to me, this event will cement his legacy in his hometown. Yeah. 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 I was not expecting in the crowd that we had this morning. It was uh, warming and uh, just showed how much they, that my father meant to them. We knew that he was very active and involved in the community, but to see the turnout, it lets you know that he did impact more people than we thought. And that just lets you know he really was respected. No matter how far he went, um, no matter how long he was gone, Bartow was always home to him. We really appreciate it, uh, everybody coming out today. Uh, it's kind of bittersweet um, knowing that he's not here, but I know he's watching uh, down him and my grandmother. Uh, so it's just good to see a lot of family. We're looking forward to August now, uh, getting into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, Five, four, three, two, one. Well, his classmates, they showed up because they had called and say, when well, we're coming, and then uh, they had made announcements and put it out, anybody was invited to come. So, and then a lot of them did, so that, it was really nice, it really was. I was in high school with Ken Riley, and we were both members of the Union Academy Alumni Association. I also taught school with Ken Riley at Winter Haven High School in Winter Haven. So I've been knowing Riley, he was a great person. I think he went too soon, and I wish he was here to see this great celebration. He's a good friend for years. He's my fraternity brother. Most importantly, he's my uh, Rattler brother. So we salute Ken Riley and his family, and we just love him to death. I, I knew him for the 17 years of my life, and I don't think I heard him talk about his football career once. So just to see all the people that he impacted, not even with just his, with his football career, just how big of person he was in the community is really great to see, inspiring, makes me want to do something similar with my life. Having a legacy in our hometown, I mean, where can you go and you know someone who is being admitted into the Hall of Fame? I think the community will embrace it and love the city for making this great contribution. Happy for the turnout and just the honor 
uh, because I grew up here and I went right, right across the street to the elementary school and just to, to see that name up now is heartwarming. He's just not here. And that's the thing that I can't, you know, seem to get over. I can just feel him, just his love. He loved life and he didn't have any regrets. His biggest legacy is just the man who he was. He didn't change to get into the Hall of Fame. He stayed true to himself. That's one of the things that, like I said, I'm really proud of. The more I just think about, like I said, he was, he was my hero. He meant everything to me, my best friend. He was my tutor, my coach, my mentor. He was kind of everything for me all through my career. When I got on that plane and I'm trying to find a seat as a rookie, and that uh, when everybody else turned me away, he embraced me. He was very family oriented, and that's the reason they kept his house here, because he always wanted us to be near family. And he was a man of God. That's what I remember most about him. He was sitting right there. I mean, I give him a big hug and just tell him how much I love him, first of all, and congratulations, uh, you deserve it. We were teammates for four years, and now we're going to be teammates forever. A lot of times the National Football League can change you. Fame can change you. He maintained true to himself. He was always the person that he was. It's bittersweet. I wish he was here. You know, the time that we had together, now, they were good times, so I wouldn't change it for anything. We are proud of him. I'm very proud of him. It, it's forever. You did it. You finally made it. I told you you were going to get in there, and uh, you made it.